friends, Eric Andreas, your guitar sage here. How are you guys doing today? Here for our, what day is today? I have no idea. It's sometime in December. It's a Thursday. It's 11 a.m. And this is when we do our live broadcasts. And today, I'm happy to say, they're actually on three platforms today. We're on Facebook, we're on YouTube, and we're on Instagram. So hello to all my Instagram folks. I see the chat thread running. Um, now, unfortunately, I will only be able to answer chats on Facebook and on YouTube, but I wanted to let you guys know uh, on Instagram that we're going to be doing that as well. Uh, so, we're going to have a blast here today, and I may even be doing some sort of giveaway today. Well, we know we're doing a giveaway today, right? Because we're doing the, the, three, the three free guitars. <clears throat> Got to get it out. I'm still under the weather, folks, so you'll have to, to bear with me. But, folks, if you don't know what I'm talking about, we're giving 30 free guitars away this month for the month of December. Uh, 30 winners, 30 days, 30 guitars. Not only that, we're also giving 30 lifetime memberships to the Unstoppable Guitar System away, over $20,000 worth of goodies, and we're having a blast, and we're continuing this, and it's super duper fun. If you want to know more about that, we're going to pop up something on the screen a little bit later uh, regarding that. Uh, but otherwise, you just leave a comment on one of my videos on Instagram, Facebook, or YouTube, and that's the way to get it done, and that will put you into the running for a free guitar and a lifetime membership to the Unstoppable Guitar System. So we're picking one winner every single day from one of those platforms and uh, would love you to be part of it. All right, my friends. So today I'm going to show you the three reasons, my three reasons, why I believe that the pentatonic scale is the most powerful scale in the world and how you can start using it today. Okay. So you heard me talk a lot. Oh, and by the way, and after the, the short little lesson here, I'm going to be taking your questions both on uh, Facebook and on YouTube. So I got my big monitor in front of me that we just had installed, which is pretty darn fun. And I'm going to be pulling that up as well. In fact, I'm going to pull that up right now. And there it is. Okay, so um, yes, we'll be doing that. So right after right after my um, discussion here about the pentatonic scale, we'll be getting into that, okay? All right, my friends, let's do this. I'm, I was hoping I could pause myself on here, but I can't. That's okay, no big deal. All right, so here we go. So the pentatonic scale, let's talk about it, <clears throat> and then uh, I'm gonna give you those three reasons, and not only am I giving, just giving you reasons, I'm also going to show you the whys of these, okay? So I'm not just giving you three reasons why it's so cool and then saying goodbye, everybody. I'm going to show you why it's so cool and how to use it so that literally today, when you get done with this broadcast, you could pull up a song and you could use the pentatonic scale over it to become creative. Now, a lot of the noodling that I was doing just now, the majority of it was pentatonic based. Yeah, there was some diatonic stuff. I threw in some minor scale bit bits in there, but for the most part, it was pentatonic. Cool. So there you go. Uh, it's very, very useful. You can use it for major minor keys. Uh, you can use it for rock, blues, jazz, you name it. You can use it, use the pentatonic scale. Okay, so let's talk about those three things and then we're gonna drill down. So why, why the three reasons why I believe it is the most powerful scale in the universe, in the metaverse, if you will. I should have changed the title to the multiverse because I truly believe that this is a powerful scale and here's why. Number one, it's super duper simple. Watch this. Number one, it doesn't get any easier than this. Let's turn some of those effects off. Here we go. Very, very simple, okay? And by the way, I have this pentatonic form here in the free ebook that you can find at yourguitarsage.com and uh, yeah, it's in a lot of my free courses and that sort of thing. And I talk about it here, or I talk about it on YouTube as well. Just search Your Guitar Sage Pentatonic and you can get more detail about that. Okay, so number one, super simple. A baby can use this, okay? I have a two and a half year old and he's playing it all day long. That's not true. But it is a very simple scale and I promise you that if you can't play it today, you'll be able to play it by the end of this broadcast and you'll be able to use it by the end of this broadcast. So number one, it's very simple. Number two, it sounds great, okay? You heard just now 
the major 99% of what I did just now, probably 95% of it is going to have to do with the pentatonic scale, using notes out of that pentatonic scale. So it sounds great. All the pros that you love, all of your favorite guitar uh, idols, if you will, are using this, okay? They're using it either in a strict pentatonic setting or sometimes they're using it amongst a couple other notes which would complete the diatonic scale or they're using it in a blue setting but nonetheless they're using pentatonic all live long day okay so you know this is proven it's not just me i'm not just telling you this jimmy page uh, jimmy hendrix eddie van halen name your favorite guitar player i guarantee you they have mastered the pentatonic scale and it's not hard to master okay there's a few different forms if you want to learn them but you can learn the one form and be deadly with it Okay, seriously. Okay, so it's simple, it sounds great, and here's the deal, you can use it in any song, okay? Literally, you can use this in any song, it doesn't matter the key, doesn't matter if it's major, minor, doesn't matter the genre, you can use it in any song, and it's gonna work, okay? Now, obviously, and we're going into the lesson here now, now obviously, when, you know, some of you have said, uh, you've written in or you'll you'll say it here in the broadcast today you'll say Erica I know the pentatonic scale I know all the forms but it just doesn't sound like it sounds like when you play or it just doesn't sound good okay that's okay think about this for just a moment uh, you get a new hammer okay you go to the hardware store and you get a new hammer and you're like look everybody I got a hammer look at my hammer Woo! it's a shiny hammer look at the handle and you're talking about the hammer and you're going on and on and on about the hammer man this thing will be really good when I hammer stuff and you're talking about the hammer and this that and the other thing right well guess what no one cares really about the hammer what are you gonna do with that hammer you gonna build a, a house with it right habitat for humanity you gonna build a house for somebody are you gonna build a a birdhouse, what are you going to do with that hammer? It's really what you do with that hammer or that pentatonic scale that makes it so cool. Okay, The hammer itself is not that cool. The pentatonic scale itself is not that cool. It just sits there. It's just five notes. In fact, it's two less notes than the, than the major scale. So if anything, it's less than the major scale, right? But there's something to say about its simplicity and once you apply it in the correct way, then that's when the magic begins, okay? So yes, I understand that a lot of you understand the pentatonic scale, and I know a lot of you know the pentatonic scale. Maybe you know the, all over the neck and all the different forms in all the different keys, and that's great. That's a great place to start. In fact, you don't even have to start with knowing all those different forms and all the different keys. Really, you just need to know the one form. I'm going to show it to you right now. Write it down or bookmark this this part of the video, write it down where I'm at so that you can come back to it and you can learn it. Now, this is going to be the A minor pentatonic scale, also known as C major pentatonic scale, but we're going to refer to it as A minor pentatonic scale because we're starting on the A. And it's super easy. Literally, we're in the fifth position, which means our, our hand, our first finger is behind the fifth fret. Okay? And that means that all the fingers will line up with the frets accordingly. Okay, as I teach in my free course, your guitarsage.com slash 30. Friends, if you don't have that basic understanding, you need to have that basic understanding of guitar. It's kind of like having your kid start off running and jumping and doing hurdles before he knows how to crawl or walk. Bad idea. Okay, don't do it. Don't do it with guitar. You need a foundation. Trust me, I've doing this. I've been doing this for over 30 years. Just listen to me and do it and save yourself a ton of heartache. Go through those first 30 lessons. They're going to save you a ton of heartache and you're going to understand the guitar in a way that you that you have not before. Okay? So, now, with that being said, one of those videos is a is a is a fretting protocol where I show you how to fret the guitar in a specific way. And one of the things I talk about is using all the fingers across the fretboard. So for this particular form, your first finger is going to play the fifth fret every single time. And it's going to go like this. One. Okay. So this is at the fifth fret now. So on the low E string, we got one, eight. I'm sorry. These are fingers. One, four. One, 
three, one, three, one, three, one, four, one, four. We got one, four, one, three, one, three, one, three, one, four, one, four. Always starts with a one, and we're playing that pattern, okay? So again, if you need that exact pattern written down on paper, you can get it on the, at the free ebook that you'll find at yourguitarsage.com. Okay, now, the pentatonic scale has several different forms. You can use them all over the fretboard. In fact, I recently came out with a video that was called Know One Form and Know Them All. And because, because the idea is this, even though people uh, think about the scales as many different forms across the fretboard, for instance, we could start this on this note, on this first finger here. <laughs> Or we could play the second form. That sort of thing. And we can keep going with this idea. And we keep going this way or down the fretboard. And really we're talking about the same five notes over and over again, right? Penta means five. So we're talking about the five note scale. Literally, even though I'm playing all over the fretboard, and it looks like I'm, play I'm playing a bunch of different notes all the time, I'm not, I'm playing the same five notes over and over again in different ways, okay? So with that being said, you can take one particular form and following the protocol that I teach in the video, know one form, know them all, you can literally take that one form and find out where everything is out all over the neck, okay? But with that being said, we're just gonna be talking about this one form today because this one form is gonna make things a lot more simple for you. And if you can understand things simply, then the complex happens later on. You can get that part. But you gotta understand it simply first. So this one form right here, we can use in the key of A, we can use it in the key of C major, doesn't matter. So for instance, if I'm playing something in A minor, nicely over the top of that. Now if I was playing something in the key of C, so we could use that same exact form in the key of C <clears throat> as well because for every major key, we have a minor key equivalent, okay? We won't get into the details of that, but if you'd like to know more about that, then uh, on YouTube, just search Your Guitar Sage Relative Major Minor, okay? Okay, now, let's keep going. If you if you know this one form, then the only thing that you have to know is how, is number one, you've gotta know the key that you're in, right? So in this case here, uh, what I was playing was in the key of E minor that bit that I did right at the top of the video. And so I used the E minor position. How do you know to do this? Well, first off, you gotta know the notes on the fretboard. You gotta know that. If you don't know that, you're gonna be, you're not gonna know the basics, you know? Again, that's that child trying to jump over a hurdle and he doesn't know how to crawl or walk. So don't do that to yourself, that's bad. Learn the basics. So first off, you gotta know the basics of the notes on the fretboard. Assuming you know that already or you're going to watch that free 30 lessons series, once you've done that, then you're gonna know where you're at on the fretboard. So if we find that something's in the key of E minor, so this is E minor chord, C, G, D, E minor, okay? And all those chords and notes together make up the key of E minor. So I know that that's E minor, those chords spell that out. You may not know that yet, and that's okay, that's why guitar is a journey, 
That's why it's a marathon. It's not like you just get to watch one video and all of a sudden you're off to the races. Do you know why? That's never happened for the history in the history of anybody, of any guitar player ever. So let's get that out of our heads right now, right? Get it out. It's never going to happen. It's a journey. You learn one thing and you stack another thing and another and another and another and then all of a sudden you can become a great guitar player. But it does happen in time by learning concepts and being patient and having fun with it, okay? Now, so I know that this is in the key of E minor. So basically what I'm doing is I'm taking that same form. I'm finding an E. There's an E. I could do it in the open position as well. But I'm going to do it up here because you guys are used to how that form looks. So... So I've got that bit going on here. So we got that kind of sound, <clears throat> and that's all having to do with the pentatonic scale. Now I could take that and I could also move it into the open position, or we could do it for any specific key. Does not matter, okay? Now, one might say to themselves, okay, well, what about major keys? Okay, perfect. Major keys. If you were to, say, play something in the key of G major, then again, the pentatonic scale would work. The only thing we have to do is play the same exact scale, except this time we're starting on our pinky instead of our first finger. And basically the tonal center will be right around your pinky there, okay? So, for instance, if we have something in the key of G, it's G. where that tonality is going to is going to play nicely together okay so one other video that I want you to think about and I mentioned it earlier is I really want you to watch the video that I have on relative major and minor and specifically watch the relative major major and minor video and then also watch any pentatonic videos that I have on YouTube if you're not already in the unstoppable guitar system then watch any of the videos that I have on YouTube uh, search your guitar sage pentatonic and you're going to find exactly what I'm talking about. Okay? Good. Because you have to, you do have to understand this concept of where do I put the scale? Because even though it's a very, very simple scale to use, okay, and even though it sounds great, okay, which we're going to get to in just a moment here, uh, we can use this in any song. We first have to know a couple things. We got to know what is the key of the song, Okay, and then we have to know, okay, if that's the key of the song, whatever the key of the song is, right? Every song's in a different key. Once we find out what our tonal center is or our key is, then we need to know how to fit the scale to that particular key. Okay, and it's not hard to do once you understand it, but you do have to know some basics. Again, covered in the free 30, um, and then you have to watch the relative major minor video and the pentatonic videos. That will get you there. You're going to give you so much knowledge and usable information. You're going to be off to the races, I promise. Okay, now let's, uh, let's talk about uh, why is it simple, okay? It's simple because we've only got five notes. Now, what happens a lot of times is when people are practicing, and I'll, sh I'll show you, this is what people do typically in the beginning when, they, when they're messing with a scale like this, is they do this. They go, they play it like a scale, and they just play it over and over again. And 
And they're like, well, Eric, I don't know why that doesn't sound good. Well, it sounds okay. You can tell it matches the key, right? But I get it. Yeah, it doesn't sound magical. Well, why? Well, for the same reason that I'm speaking the way I'm speaking right now, instead of speaking to you like this. Friends, today we're going to be talking about the pentatonic scale. It's a super powerful scale. I'm going to talk to you about three different ways to make it awesome. And what we're going to do is we're going to learn about the music theory on it. We're going to learn about how to the technique for it. We're going to learn how to use it in all sorts of songs. And we're going to learn how to go relative major and minor with it. We're going to learn about the different patterns. And we're going to keep going. We're going to have a lot of fun. It's going to be super awesome. And you're going to be super excited. And we're going to rule the world with our pentatonic scale. See, I'm not going to talk like that, right? Because that's number one, it's super boring and super this. And you're going to check out right? Because we don't, life doesn't go like that. Life is ebb and flow. It's exciting. It's tragic. It's all, right? It's, it's crazy. It's up and down. So art, which imitates life, shouldn't be that way either. So we should have, um, you know, we should be speaking phrases, right? So we might go... That's a phrase. That's like, hey, man, what are you doing today? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like speaking in phrases. So this is something that takes some time to get used to. But if you just let your looper pedal spin, or better yet, when you're, if you're inside the Unstoppable Guitar System, we have nearly 600 jam tracks there. You can let those jam tracks just spin, and you can sit here and mess with it to where you're not getting it, not getting it, not getting it. Wait a minute. What, was, what just came out of my fingers... Ah, it was a mistake. Not getting it, not getting it. Oh, I mistakenly played something great again, and then, well, I mistakenly played something else great, and now all of a sudden, more of your mistakes sound great than they do sound bad, okay? It's because you're getting it. Okay, so, so this comes from repetition, and just like a child, right? A little two-and-a-half-year-old running around the house right now upstairs, uh, he's starting to speak in phrases. Well, at first he can only speak in words. This is just like you and I when we're just starting to practice guitar. We can only play a note, two notes, three notes at a time. And then we're like, well, I don't know what else to play. And then you watch your favorite guitar player and they're just shredding all over the neck from the top of the guitar to the bottom. And you're like, well, how do they know to do that? They're thinking down the road so far. Well, it happens in time. It happens by repetition. Okay. So when you're practicing this, you could use my jam tracks. Uh, I've got jam tracks on YouTube as well. If you just search your guitar stage jam tracks, I have some. And what you could do is slowly learn how to phrase. They don't have to be exciting phrases. They just need to be very simple. Like I teach in the minimalistic blues section of the Unstoppable Guitar System. I have minimalistic blues. I've got call and response. Also on YouTube, you could search your guitar stage call and response. There's a lot of stuff there where I'll play something and then you're going to mimic me. And because of that, it's going to get you, uh, it's going to get you attenuated to phrasing. Okay, and phrasing is the most important thing. Literally everything that I did just now at the top of the video was made up. But as I improvise more throughout life, and I by no means believe that I'm like some master at improvisation. I, in fact, I, I think that I suck compared to where I want to be, okay? But you get the idea is that well, the more you do this, the more you will start phrasing so that even when you're not playing the most exciting thing in the world, your phrasing is such to where it comes across as communication. Have you ever spoken with somebody who's using a lot of $5 words and they're talking with a real commanding voice and they've got all the other, they've got all the bits down, but what's coming out of their mouth is just complete fluff. It's crap. And you're like, I wish this guy would shut up, right? And then you ever run into like a little old lady or a little old man or somebody who just has some wisdom. Maybe I, there was this janitor, I swear he was an angel, who used to come in uh, to a place that I worked. And he was just this crusty old dude and he was hilarious. And sometimes he would just stop and he would look at me and he would say something that would just blow me away. And I was like, there's no way that that guy just said that. It was like something so deep or something, whatever. Uh, obviously, pre preconceived notions. But, um, but bottom line, you don't have to, to say something, you don't have to be an expert 
you don't have to have all this skill. You just have to speak from the heart. And that's really where you want to start with this stuff is speaking from the heart. Close your eyes. Don't be afraid of how it sounds. Babble, babble, babble. Get it out. Get it out here. That's when the magic starts happening. When you're up in your head, you're dead. All right? Don't be thinking about that. Let it come from your heart. Music's from the heart. And they've and science has proven that the heart is, uh, well, number one, it's the first thing that, 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 it's the first organ that develops, right, when, when we are in our mother's womb. The heart is pumping away but way before our brain is even thinking about getting developed, right? That's pretty crazy. And science has proven already that the heart knows things, knows things. I know, get this through your head because your head's not going to allow this to happen. But your heart knows things that your brain does not. Right? That's why when somebody, a loved one in your, in your home dies or, or you have somebody close to you that dies or there's this deep feeling, it's right in this section right here, right? It's not here. It's right in here because your heart knows stuff. When you fall in love, this, that, and the other thing. These, this, is, this is our core right there, man. That's where you want to speak from the guitar from. Not here. This is shit. Okay. All right. Let's get into it. Let's get some questions answered. Um, we got into the simply. We got into sounds great, right? All the pros are using it. We can use this in any song. Let me get to some questions because I know you guys have some. And I'm going to start today, friends, with... Um, I'll be starting with YouTube. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Holy mackerel, this thing is flying a million miles per hour. Okay, so I'm just going to go all the way to, wow, jeez. All right, I'm going to try to snag one out of there. This is nuts. Are you for real? Are you for real? This chat on YouTube is going 25 miles, or 250 miles per hour. Okay, I'm going to just try to grab one here. When I phrase on your tracks right from my own head, is that how I get my own style or flavor? Jeff is saying on YouTube. Yes, indeed. You don't have to worry about coming up with your own flavor. Your flavor is you. It's going to happen. I don't care how many other guitar players you're copying or listening to. Your own flavor is going to come out. There's a reason that you're copying other guitar players. is because you like their sound. There's a reason that I've copied hundreds of guitar players is because I love Angus Young and I love Randy Rhodes and I love Jakey e. Lee and I love Zach Wilde and I love, you know, Eddie Van Halen. There's so many guitar players that I look up to that I'm like, oh, I want to get that. And I want to take part of what they have and I want to insert it into my heart and into my playing and into my fingers so that when I play, it comes out. Well, guess what? The more you do that, the more that will happen, okay? So um, so don't be afraid of copying other players. That's the best way. Look, look, if you were afraid of that, you wouldn't have learned your first like 10,000 words from just sitting there and listening to your, your mom and dad or whoever raised you or the people that were around you. That's how you learn. You never cracked open a book. You did it by copying, by mimicking, okay? So um, good stuff. So don't be afraid of doing it, you know? Uh, so Nigel's saying on YouTube, he's saying, is it possible to mix the pentatonic scales and normal scales to make a song? Indeed. Remember that the pentatonic scale is the five note scale. The diatonic scale, which is typically what, we, what we're hearing very often, just like the pentatonic scale, is like songs like um, Mary Had a Little Lamb, um, Happy Birthday, really 99.9% .9 of all the songs out there that ever existed are written diatonically, which is major and minor. And that is do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, right? And really we could take the last guy out because it's the duplication of number one. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and back to one, which is one. So really we have seven notes. So the diatonic scale just takes two of them out. Okay, it doesn't take the last two, but it takes two notes out. And, uh, and it makes for a very stable scale, makes it very, uh, the notes are very easy, okay? So with all that being said, yeah, you can go back and forth between, between either of them. There's no rules. It's literally just paint. So it's kind of like, think about this. Think about music in other terms like art in other ways because if you don't, then what happens, a lot of people think that there's so many rules. There's no, there's no rules in music. That's not what music theory is, friends. 
Music theory is not rules. Screw rules. It's not rules. Only thing music theory is, is it says, this is the reason why this particular thing sounds like this, or this is how to construct this chord, if this is what you're going after, or this is how to construct this scale, or, well, if you're using music theory, this will tell you why the Beatles, uh, why that one section of the song took a dip and made you feel really uh, sad in a completely happy song. So that's all music theory is, is it's an explanation of why things work. They're not rules, okay? Uh, suggestions sometimes, but really, they are, they are not rules, okay? So just remember that. Um, when you're painting, and you're like, oh, I'm going to paint some kids on a hill flying a kite with birds and a mountain and everything like that. Uh, and you're going like, oh, I'm going to build, I'm going to paint a, a hill now. And you dip your brush automatically into green, right? Because it's a spring day and you're starting to paint the hill. Are you like, mm, wait a minute, is green right? What if, I, what if it's purple grass? Oh, no, I, I can't paint. Well, don't do that with your guitar playing. Get that guitar. You are just as much of a guitar player as Eddie Van Halen or anybody else, and you should be playing guitar, okay? It's within each one of us to create, okay? So don't sell your stuff, don't sell yourself short. Pick up the brush and play, or pick up the guitar and play, okay? So you're painting the hill green, right? If you want to paint it purple, paint it purple. Who am I, who am I to say, right? So just remember that. Okay. Um, so some of these questions as they're going by, um, I may or may not answer because they just may not make sense. So like, can you tell me how they did Blackbird of, of the Beatles? Well, I could tell you that, uh, Blackbird, yeah, I could tell you that, uh, my understanding is that, and I could tell you from, from a classical background that chances are Paul McCartney was messing with some classical stuff like... There's sometimes little exercises that we do as guitar players, um, which includes, you know, So he's thinking, you know, polyphonically, so several different voices. Uh, he's thinking finger picking, and um, that's probably in the key of G or C, and that's how that's going to come about, you know. Um, hey, uh, Mr. Eric, can you tell us like how to know what you're going, what you're gonna learn next? I'm not sure what that question means. Um, what I'm gonna learn next. I learn what I desire because there's so much to learn on the guitar that I just go where my heart leads me. You know, where, what, what is it that I want to learn today? You know? All right, great, great questions. All right, I'm popping over to Facebook here because I, I do not want to leave those folks uh, hanging. Um, so Hugh is saying, who would you suggest artist-wise to listen to for getting a handle on ba on ballad like blues or not shredding blues? Definitely B.B. King is one to listen to. Um, ZZ Top is not what I would consider like shredding blues. They're just blues. And yeah, there are a couple of licks that they play that might be a little bit faster, but really he's not a fast player. He probably could be or is, but just doesn't do that very often. So, uh, but really melodic, uh, you know, Buddy Guy is amazing. B.B. Uh, King is, is, is probably my number one, you know. Uh, Blaine's saying, how can you afford to give away so much for free? Thanks for your help, Sage. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Blaine. I really appreciate that, bud. Uh, do you try to learn a new song every day? Tony is saying. Tony, not so much anymore, just because my days are so all over the place with um, with your guitar sage, and then with you know being married and and children and everything else. So I wish it were like that. I love that, um, but I wouldn't sacrifice the stuff that I have right now in regards to you know in, in exchange for that. But 
Um, yeah, back in the day, that's what I did. It's every day I was learning something. And it wasn't necessarily like my goal is to finish a song today, but my goal was to learn something new today and to just keep going. Uh, and sometimes that was learning a new song. Sometimes that was learning several new tunes. Um, but yeah, you always need to keep things exciting. If you're not keeping things exciting, then you're, you're not going to be into it, right? You're just not going to be, you're not going to be picking the guitar up. It needs to be passionate, you know? Is there ever a reason to not use a guitar pick? Laura's saying, yeah, sure, if you want a finger pick. Uh, the whole thing that I did in the beginning of the broadcast today was all finger picking just because that was what I was in the mood to do. I'm feeling very uh, in touch with the guitar and I just didn't want a pick in between me and the strings. So I just wanted to feel the strings. Uh, so yeah, there's times where you'll want to do that or times where it's a finger picking part. Um, okay. Eric, what's your favorite acoustic and electric guitar? Uh, Xavier saying, my favorite electric at this point is probably my Strat, my 65 Strat. And my favorite acoustic would be my Gibson SJ200. Those are just two of my, when I was a kid, those were my dream guitars. And guess what? They happen to be my favorite guitars to play now too. How fun is that? All right, good stuff. Um, Eric, how do I improve chord changes? I feel like I'm always, I always stop between switching. Okay, let's talk about this. I know a lot of folks have issues with what we call transitioning, and I have videos for this. And in fact, inside of the, the free series, yourguitarsage.com slash 30, I go over this in detail, Matt. Um, so you definitely want to check that out. Anybody who's having any issues with chords, strumming, picking, um, any music theory, start there. My gosh, start there. That's going to be your salvation, I promise. In regards to guitar, it's going to be your salvation. Okay, so here's the deal, Matt. When you're switching chords, what you want to do is you want to take two chords, two chords only. The devil's in the detail, so listen to what I'm saying. Only take two chords and switch back and forth between whatever two chords you're having an issue with. Your whole point is to be accurate, not fast. Speed is a byproduct of accuracy. Okay, so don't try to be fast. Try to be accurate. No one can be fast if they're not accurate. It doesn't count. No one cares. No one cares about some guitar player flying all over the fretboard who's messy. I don't. Do you? They're not speaking anything. That's like speaking super fast like at an auction, and not really being able to understand. What's the point? Speaking fast? That's ridiculous. So playing fast, there's no point in it if you're not being clear. So you take those two chords, and you're on the one chord. You think about the next chord, okay? Think about this in life. You're where you're at today, where, wherever you're going to go. you got to think about going there before you go there. It's a good idea before you get in your car to figure out where you're going. I know it sounds very logical, but there's a ton of people that don't live life this way. Okay, they may drive that way because you have to, otherwise you're going to drive in circles and waste a bunch of gas, but they're not thinking about, well, I'm here today, where do I want to be tomorrow? Where do I want to be in a week from now, a month from now, a year from now, five years, 10 years, 20 years, 50 years? If you're not doing that, you're not going to get there. You don't just happen upon success, you plan it, okay? So, you got your chord, and you're like, well, I want to play a G chord next. So, okay. So what you do is you think about that G chord in your mind. What does it look like? Okay, uh, see what it looks like. Where are your fingers going to go? Where's the first finger going to go? Where's the second finger go? Where's the third and fourth finger going to go? And then what you do is you mentally take all that inventory. You see it in your mind's eye ahead of time. If you don't do visualization, you need to be doing visualization. You do. For the guitar, for your life, everything. If you see yourself as crap, oh, I'm crap, I'm crap, I'm crap, I'm going to mess this up, I'm going to mess this up. Mm, good job. You're solidifying your crappiness because you're creating. Trust me, I've done it both ways and it works. Uh, you got to visualize where you're going. And it's very important what's going on in your head. Okay. Don't put bad things in your head. So you're on your E chord here, you're going to the G chord. So you visualize that in your mind, you see it all beforehand, then you go there, okay? And you go there 
slowly but surely setting fingers up from the low strings to the high strings. Then you're in position. You're like, yeah, that feels good. Great. You don't even have to strum. We're just setting the chord up. Then you say, okay, here we go. Now I'm going to blank chord. And you go back to your E chord. Now here's the E chord. And you're thinking about it. You're setting it up. Then you're thinking G chord. You're thinking about it beforehand. The most important thing to do is the thinking about it. Okay? I know. You don't want to do that. You just want to grab the chord and go, right? Wrong. Don't do that. It's messy. That's why you keep messing up. You got to think about it ahead of time. And what happens is you start building this habit of thinking about it ahead of time that eventually it becomes a subconscious thing. And you don't have to sit there and think about it. I mean, when I'm soloing, you see me go from the top or the bottom of the neck to the top of the neck and back down and I'm doing all this stuff and I'm doing double stops and I'm in all these different forms. I didn't plan this out, right? This is improvisation. But what I have trained my brain to do is I've trained it to don't worry. You're out there on the limb. You're, you're improvising. You don't know what's coming next. Yeah, there's a few hundred people, maybe a thousand people looking at you. But it's okay because you know what key you're in and you can work your way out of issues. You can work your way out of problems. The only thing you got to do is you got to focus on what's happening next. You don't have to think about three or four steps down the line. You just got to think about what's happening next. Okay. So that's what you want to do with your transitioning. And then just going back and forth until things become smooth. And then you can start working in the strumming hand, working really slowly. And then pick two other chords and do the same thing. Okay? Good, good, good. Okay, Roy is saying, when I get stuck in the repetitive mode, I like to get I like to go back to the beginning. Is that hurting me or should I go learn newer stuff? I like to see how I have progressed, but I don't want to get behind. Uh, thank you. Uh, that's from Roy uh, over on Facebook. And Roy, there is nothing wrong with doing that. No. And in fact, I prefer to go back to basics a lot of times. Now, obviously, there's some basics that I don't go back to anymore just because just because I've done them so many times, but you cannot have enough of the basics. When you have a good core, a good base foundation, it will make you unstoppable. It will make it to where you can always go back to, to the origin of whatever it is that you're working on. So it's totally fine. Um, okay, so Ron's saying, when you speak of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, is that the fifth string root C major scale form one? Ron, it could be. Uh, you know, I'm talking about it in general, so I don't know what scale I'm singing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. 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 I was singing E. One, two, three, four, five, six. So it doesn't matter. Now, um, you know, when you speak of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, is that the fifth string? Yeah, it doesn't matter, Ron. So you, so Ron has. Uh, been through my free series, or he's in the Unstoppable Guitar System, where he's got the um, he's got the free ebook because I talk about this specific scale that he's talking about there. And yes, so you could use it for C, but it doesn't matter. Okay, good, good, good. Can you quickly say what modes mean? Jeff is asking. Modes are are derivatives of the scale. So if we were to play G major like this, that's G major. That's also known as the Ionian mode. Okay. Now if I play that same scale from the second scale degree to the second scale degree, so instead of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, like that, if I start from the two, Now I'm playing the A, Aeolian mode. Doesn't bother your ear one way or the other, does it? Doesn't make a big difference. Now, so don't, don't get too uh, overwhelmed by modes. Unless you're a, a jazz player, you probably aren't going to be that interested in modes anyhow, because truly to use a mode in the way that, that it makes it a mode, you have to approach it in a certain way where basically you're, you're matching a, a chord to a mode. 
okay? And it's complex stuff. If, if anything that I'm talking about now is confusing you, getting into jazz modes is going to overwhelm you right now. Although, inside the Unstoppable Guitar System, I go into detail about it. Okay, for those folks that are that are upper upper level and they wanna they wanna do that. Okay, uh, Jamie saying hello, Eric from a truck stop near U eighteen. Wheels rolling, nice, Jamie. Keep keep safe, my friend. Uh, how Xavier? How do you make your hand faster using scales? You practice and don't stop practicing, and no excuses. Just practice, practice, practice your scales. Anything you want to get good at, practice that particular thing. Is it okay to jump from psalm to psalms without learning how to play the whole psalms? Sure, nothing wrong with that. Uh, nothing wrong with that whatsoever. In fact, any more, uh, I do stuff like that because, um, uh, you know, I do stuff like that because there's just so much to learn, right? So much to learn. My little finger cur uh, kind of curves in. Will practice change that or... Uh, will I have to adapt? Steven is saying, or uh, Steve Strawn is saying, don't worry about your hand, Steve. Uh, look at my hand. I don't know if you can see this or not, but um, my pinky, my my middle finger, my thumb. Uh, I used to have arthritis really, really bad when I ate animal products and got super inflamed and got deformed. Uh, five of my fingers are, are quite deformed because of that. Uh, was attacked by a 150 pound Rottweiler right here and nearly tore these two fingers off. It was a long recovery there of no playing guitar. That was a blast. Had 40 stitches in that hand. But nonetheless, um, your, your body will adapt, okay? Very much so to whatever. Uh, so don't worry about that. Uh, watch the guys on YouTube with no arms playing with their feet. That will inspire you and, and, and will show you that you're bent little finger will not hinder you whatsoever as far as playing. If it does, you're not practicing enough because you'll get it, I promise. All right, good uh, good, good questions here, my friends. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad I recovered too. That was a long time ago. That was like 1995, maybe. It was a long, a whole nother lifetime ago. Okay, uh, F430 Turbo, who I talk to a lot on YouTube, is saying, Eric, when I first started playing guitar, I learned the chords and some pentatonic scales. Then I thought, why learn scales when I don't want to write songs or play lead guitar? Are my thoughts way off? Nope, not necessarily. Um, you know, this is how I like to think about life and about guitar is be because there's so much to know that why don't you go about playing guitar and if you're like, huh, well, I want to learn how to write songs. Well, what do I need to learn how to write songs? And then you go to YouTube or whatever and you're like, songwriting for guitar, you know, or what have you. Then you're going to get some bits and pieces about that. You know what I mean? So don't worry about variables. You got scales, you got chords, you got theory, you got jazz, you got blues, you got, you know, don't worry about all that stuff. Pick up the guitar, do what it is that you want to do. If you're like, I really want to know how to do blues, I want to learn how to play blues, then start watching some of my blues videos or, or whoever's blues videos and learn how to play blues. So you're not, it's, not that you're, it's not that you're way off. I mean, we use scales and for all that stuff, but you don't have to either. I mean, there's a ton of amazing uh, songwriters here in Nashville who don't know how to play scales, but they write hit songs that have made millions of dollars because here's the deal uh if i don't know a scale i can still sing do re mi fa so la ti do and that's a scale so even though you may not be able to play it it's up in here um it's in here okay uh okay good 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 um do I have a form for my followers to share ideas, progress, etc.? Spite is saying. Spite, um, I do inside of the Unstoppable Guitar System, which is, I think you guys know about that already. The Unstoppable Guitar System, I do have uh, that so that players can uh, be together and they can talk together and they can share ideas and all the rest. Also, my Facebook page is a, is a great place to do that. So you may want to uh, join in on the fun there. 
Uh, Eric, I love the way you have the building blocks to make me a better player. Do you do any session work? Steve, I have not done session work now for a few years just because this is absolutely uh, consumed so much of my time. Now, I used to, and I loved it a lot. I loved grabbing my guitar and grabbing an amp or grabbing my, my Line 6 setup and going to a, a studio and just working with a producer or sometimes a, a, a band and just sitting there and working on those guitar parts. Loved it. It was really a whole different way of thinking, but um, I loved it, you know, and I miss it. I do. Only so much time in the day, though. So I was just saying, what's my favorite uh, pentatonic position to solo in? And it would definitely have to be form one, which again, if you don't know what form one is at the pentatonic scale, download the free ebook that's at yourguitarsage.com. Okay. Okay, what's the best starting structure for learning rockabilly in UGS? What's your best starting structure for learning rockabilly in UGS? Dave is saying. Um, Dave, Blues. Blues has everything to do with rockabilly. So, you know, it has a lot to do with rockabilly. So learn the blues and w learn the turnarounds and everything else that are inside um, in, that are inside the Unstoppable Guitar System, specifically that blues section, okay? All right, bumping over to Facebook here, friends. Um... Uh, somebody has a Rottweiler pen. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I know, I know. This this guy, this particular guy who uh, who was actually the the dog trainer in in was actually our dog trainer at the time. Uh, his dog had had bit me, so his dog obviously was not trained or had some sort of something or another. But he he said I looked at it in the eyes. Sorry, but I'm not supposed to look at him in the eyes. I was petting him and giving him my hand to smell, and he just. Took off with my hand. Shook me like a rag doll. Woo! All right. Uh, have you, you have a video on amps, what all the dials do and what for. I get so confused. Acoustic seems simpler at times. Todd, yes. Uh, so, I, so I have lots of videos like that inside the Unstoppable Guitar System where I really go down the rabbit hole and we talk about amps, different types of amps, pedals, uh, all that good stuff. And... And it will truly help help get you to understand this electric stuff and not be so confused about that. But yes, acoustic for sure is much simpler. Mm -hmm. Okay, good, good, good. <clears throat> oh, and Matt's asking as a beginner. Okay, very good. Uh, Matt, is it better to learn one song or multiple songs at once? Um... It really just depends. If you're a beginner, I'd say learn one song at a time because you really need to focus. The more you can focus, and this can be, you know, you could be an advanced player. Focus is really, really important. Uh, the more you focus, the better you're going to be able to do at any particular something, you know? So focus on one particular thing. Also, if you are bouncing around, make sure that you're bouncing around because you desire so much to learn this new technique or this new song, as opposed to you're bailing out because something becomes too hard. Boo. Do you have a course on hybrid picking? Uh, Tony is saying. Tony, I talk about it in the Unstoppable Guitar System. Uh, to some degree, I've got uh, you know, Travis picking and finger picking, and then I teach regular picking, but specifically hybrid picking, a course on it? No, I do not. <clears throat> uh, Kenny is saying, hi, I see four links for your products. Are they all the same? You've referenced the Unstoppable Guitar System several times. Should I start with that one? Uh, let's talk about it really quickly, uh, folks. Basically, there's a few different ways to learn from me. YouTube, if you like jumping around and are not committal and you're totally happy with your progress on guitar and you're just you're just cool jumping around, you know, maybe maybe the person who, who isn't real serious about guitar and you just you just you wanna play but you're not like, hey, I wanna become really, really good. I'm cool with being mediocre. Nothing no offense with that, because I mean the majority of the world is mediocre. Uh, at everything, and there's nothing <clears throat> wrong with that per se. You're, uh, you may be a master at the drums, okay? Um, so, 
That's one way to learn, is jumping around on YouTube, searching whatever you're looking for. Your Guitar Sage Elvis, your Guitar Sage Pentatonic, your Guitar Sage Chili Peppers, whatever you're looking for. That's one way to do it. Another way to do it, the next step would be to start at the free course, yourguitarsage.com slash 30. In fact, anybody, if, even if you're watching on YouTube, start there. I cannot emphasize this. I cannot emphasize this to you enough. Why? Because it's going to build that foundation for you so that once you have that, you can go on and do a bunch of other stuff, okay? Uh, but you got to have that foundation built. You just have to, okay? Uh, the next step would be Udemy, U-D-E-M-Y, the complete guitar system. It's the number one guitar course on Udemy. We are in 191 countries with that particular course. It's the number one course on Udemy. And um, 191 countries, and we have we're coming up on 100,000 students in my courses on Udemy. So, with that being said, check that out. Um, that is the most affordable way to get into, to, to get more committed. Now, the creme de la creme product is the Unstoppable Guitar System. And that one is basically everything that I've taught in one place that's organized, it's step-by-step, step, it's beginner, it's intermediate, it's advanced, there's jam tracks. Uh, in fact, we have nearly 600 uh, lessons in there and nearly 600 jam tracks. Uh, amazing tools for you. So you can check that out. And here's the deal, on any of that stuff, uh, get your money back if you don't like it, okay? So 100% your money back, okay? All right, great question. So that's that's how to get started, Kenny. So no, everything's uh, everything's different. Everything's different. Any suggestions as to where to go online to learn scales for the guitar? Yes, the free course that I just mentioned, yourguitarsage.com slash 30. I've only done songs so far. My teacher and I have done scales yet. Uh, we've done mostly Beatles songs. Yes, Gina, yourguitarsage.com slash 30. Start there. Uh, I teach you all about the major scale, show you a few different versions of it, and then why it's so important. What's it going to do for you? Um, Xavier's saying, what's the best thing to use when scaling, nails or flesh? Uh, just depends on what you want to do. Do you want to use your fingernails or do you want to use, you know, it, it just depends. Or a, a guitar pick. What type of slide should I get? It depends. Uh, slides are as diverse as brushes for artists. So it really depends. Try different you know, try copper, try glass, try steel. There's all different kinds. The one that the one that I ended up being, and I've got lots of slides here, but the one that I love the most, and this isn't necessarily endorsing this because it may be great for you and not for me. Or I mean, it may be great for me and not for you. Um, now, this is one of them. Now, this one's glass, but there's another one that I got at the NAMM show a few years ago. And... Um, and it's actually a real hard synthetic plastic, but the tone is really amazing on it. Uh, I, I'm so surprised that I'm saying that over the glass. There's something about it that I really, really, that I really love. Okay. Uh, Matt saying, I'm having a problem playing by ear. I can watch someone playing and play what they're playing, not by ear. I don't see the question there, Matt. Um, Jeff is saying, now that you gave me the, your unstoppable guitar, am I still eligible for an acoustic? Jeff, everybody's eligible for the acoustic. Yes, indeed. Um, what folks, for folks that uh, don't know what we're talking about here, I am giving a guitar away, 30 guitars away, actually, in the month of December, along with lifetime memberships to the Unstoppable Guitar System. There's the link right there. If you want to know more about that, go there. Um, otherwise, just leaving a comment on any of my videos on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube will put you in the running. Uh, obviously, more than 30 people are probably going to leave a comment. There's probably more than 30 people leaving a comment right at this second. So with that being said, I've got 30 guitars and uh, 30 lifetime membership courses that I'll be giving away and over $20,000 worth of stuff this month. So, uh, And we're going to be doing this to the end of the month. So jump in there, have a blast, and hopefully you guys will win. Okay. All right, all right, jumping back over to YouTube now. 
And oh, by the way, make sure you're using a question mark, friends, because if I don't see a question mark, chances are I'm gonna miss it because these chats move pretty quickly, right? Okay. All right, well, your questions are slowing down a little bit here, friends, so I'm assuming uh, hybrid picking, someone's asking, Tommy, Tommy Thompson. Um, Tommy, hybrid picking is the idea of using a pick and using your fingers at the same time. So, like, um, you know, um, sort of thing. Uh, using a pick and using your fingers at the same time. Now most of the time when people do that they don't have fingernails like I do. Uh, so when you're using fingernails with an electric guitar sometimes it can be a little wonky because uh, it's just not as recommended as using your actual fingertips on the electric. Yeah. Uh, Greg is saying, hey Eric, who does your hair? Daniel the Lake. The, the lake? The, I forgot how to say his name, but he's uh, this guy from Detroit. He's amazing. He lives here in Nashville now, and he's covered in tattoos and gauges, and but he's a super sweet guy. I love him. Uh, uh, Siobhan is saying, I am from India. Can I get a chance to win the acoustic? Indeed. This is a worldwide, this is an international competition, friends. And so basically, if I say a competition, you're, 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 you're competing against other comments, I guess. Um, yes, what we're going to do is if we can't get a guitar to you, if it's going to be too costly postage-wise or whatever, then we're going to literally send you the money. And we've done this with some folks already here. So, yeah, anybody can win. Eric, how well will I be able to play my Epiphone if I win? win? You'll be able to play like Jimi Hendrix, okay? <clears throat> Eric, I have a classical guitar and I want to get an acoustic and an electric guitar. What are low-priced electric guitars that don't suck? Al Reza. Ali Reza. Hopefully I pronounced that correct, correctly. Right there. Um, just put that uh, link on the sc screen there, friends. Kit.com slash your guitar sage. Click on that. Um, open up another tab and check that out. So if you have any questions ever about pedals, about acoustic guitars, about electric guitars, about slides, about picks, about capos, amps, um, you name it. Even some of the equipment that I use here in the studio um, to do my broadcasts and to, uh, and to do videos. Uh, that's where all that can be found is in that kit store, kit.com slash your guitar sage. That will show you all the bits and pieces, uh, and these are tried and true pieces that I've personally handpicked. I'm not just throwing stuff up there. Typically stuff that I've reviewed or that I particularly like for some reason. And I do have some um, some lower priced items on there as well. Okay. Okay. Great. Uh, what is, uh, what should an effective practice session consist of? Scott is saying. Scott, it just depends on what it is that you want to do. So I get this question a lot and I have sections inside of the unstoppable guitar system that are specifically dedicated to practice. I even have a coaching session in there where it's like, okay, this is what we're working on today and I'm literally working with you um, as if I'm just sitting in front of you. It's a coaching session. and uh, But it really depends on what your desires are. So, it, so Scott, if you're somebody who wants to play a uh, great blues guitar, your practice session is going to be 100% different than somebody who is a songwriter in Nashville. Okay, So if you're a blues player and you want to become a great blues player, you're going to want to know the 12 bar blues, you're going to want to know the blues scale inside and out, you're going to know how to phrase, you're going to want to know um, how to do turnarounds, etc. If you're a songwriter, you want to know how your chords work, you want to know how to go back and forth between different chords and create energies and, and um, emotions with your chords, that sort of thing. So, you know, it really depends on what you're looking for. So find out what it is that you want to do, Scott, and then say, what is it, 
what is it that I want or what is it that I need to do to get to that spot? If you tell me specifically what it is that you want to do, I might be able to help you a little bit better than that. Um, okay, great. What do you what do you think the best kind of picking is when using a guitar pick? I don't know what that question means, Shane. Uh, what the best kind of picking? I mean, pick. Just the kind where you take the pick and it hits the strings. You'll have to give me more detail what you're talking about. What's the best way to keep your guitar so it doesn't get out of tune? Vance is saying. Vance, I have a very detailed video on YouTube and a lot more detail inside the Unstoppable Guitar System. I have a whole series actually on keeping your guitar in tune. But I have a video on YouTube. Uh, just search your guitar sage tune, T-U-N-E, or tuning, and that video should pop up. And there's a lot of detail in there. Okay, so check that out. Eric, is there going to be future lessons on slide guitar? Uh, I have lessons on slide guitar, both on YouTube and inside the Unstoppable Guitar System. Eric, I have a classical guitar, and I want to get an acoustic and an electric guitar. Okay, so we've been over that. Yes, so sorry about that. Greg, I'm bald. <laughs> Good for you, Greg. Oh, I see. And someone's named Bald and Bearded. Okay, beautiful. Oh, that's nice. Daily G, just, uh, just know we love you. Oh, that's so nice. Thank you so much, Daily. I really, really appreciate that. I truly, truly appreciate that. That's really kind. In fact, so kind. I'm telling you what, Daily, I'm going to, Daily, is it Dally? It's Dally G. Dally G. Um, Chris. Mark this gentleman down, Dally G, D-A-L-L-Y-G, on YouTube, and I'm going to give him a lifetime membership to the Unstoppable Guitar System just because I'm feeling crazy, okay? That's what we're doing. So, Dally, thank you for the kind words. I really appreciate that, my friend. Okay. Congratulations there, my friend. Okay. Um, all right. I'm going to take two more questions. I'm going to take, um, I'm going to take two more. I'm going to take two off of YouTube and I'm going to take two off of Facebook and then we're going to we're going to call it um, you're so welcome Dally hopefully I'm pronouncing your name right there my, my friend I'm going to take two more questions two on YouTube two on Facebook and then we're going to close up shop and then um, that's what we're going to do okay because I got lots and lots and lots of videos to make for you guys okay Okay, questions questions well, I'm going to pop over to YouTube and then I will and then I'll pop back over to YouTube, okay? Laura is saying, I still have scales to practice, but I like to know how things work. I was given charts that are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I was wondering why or would it be better to learn or should I change them to their corresponding notes, notes and letters? Laura, you're probably talking about a Nashville number system chart would be my guess, unless you're talking about tablature, because really there is no zero chord, so you're probably talking about tablature, and um, that's totally different. So tablature is a way of learning how to play a particular song, you know, notes and uh, frets and uh, strings, and I teach this inside the Unstoppable Guitar System, uh, also a bit in the free ebook that you can find at your guitar stage. So no, you don't you do not have to to um, convert that at all. You um, you don't you don't need to do that. Uh, tablature is specifically meta, is specifically created so you don't have to think about that. Okay, so you can just jump in and go right away, you know? Um, Steve Caggiano, a buddy of mine who I grew up with. Which string is the best? Someone told me it was the E, but someone else said that it was the G. I want to get good at picking one of them. <laughs> of course, Steve. Well, I would have to say it's the E. I mean, the high E string, and it's because it breaks all the time, and that's why everybody... But I'm kind of fond of the G string, too, Steven. So, there you go. Um, thank you, buddy. Thanks. Good to see you, pal. Okay, uh, I'm going to take one more on, uh, on, on Facebook and then we'll bump back over to YouTube and then we're done. What does it mean to extend a scale? I heard you talk about it. I've seen you do it, but I need 
uh, an explanation, please. Okay, so here you go, Rick. So what I mean by extending a scale is just keep going. So we could go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Or we could go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Or we, oh, sorry, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three. Keep going. So we could go. Okay, there you go. So we could extend the scale one way in one direction or the other and just keep going and um, and go down. You could do the same, same thing. Okay, done on Facebook there. I'm gonna pop back over to YouTube really quickly and get uh, see any last questions. So hey, best, Drew, yeah? Uh, can you tell Dally G to put his email address in the comments? Yes, um, Dally G, if you would, email, um, yes, Dally, if you could, Dally G, if you could post your email address, that'd be great. If you're uncomfortable with that, then we're going to have to find an alternative way. Can we not get in touch with him on YouTube? Or? No, we can't direct message him. Okay. Um, okay, we can't direct message you on YouTube. You can hit us up on any other social media. Okay. Uh, Dally G, yes, uh, we're going to need to get your information somehow so that we can get you that lifetime membership. So if you feel comfortable with it, you could email, you could so, Put your email address right now into the chat, and and Chris will capture that, and then we'll get in touch with you, and we'll know it's you because your your avatar will be right there, and uh, if not, then we're gonna need to find some way to prove that it's you. That's gonna be the easiest way and the, and the quickest way for us to get it to you. But if you're not comfortable with that, we'll need to think of a different way. Okay, so let's take two more questions on here. Uh, Kevin is saying, is it better for acoustic or classical fingerstyle? Is it better for acoustic or classical fingerstyle? I'm not sure what that question means. If you can rephrase that in a way that I can understand it, that'd be great. Rocky is saying, missed the show. Can I go back and watch this in full? Yes, Rocky. Uh, so friends, this will be... Um, hey, there's... Uh, yep, yeah, thanks, bud. Okay, thanks, Dally. Appreciate that, bud, for uh, putting your email address there, sir. Um, yes, folks... After this broadcast, this will be on YouTube. It may take a minute or so for it to, um, it may take a minute for it to become live, but it will be available. All right. Uh, one more question. Okay, Kevin, you just, is it better on acoustic or classical for fingerstyle? You just posted the same thing. That doesn't help me. Uh, you know, so I'm going to answer this the way I think that you're asking this. Is it better? to play fingerstyle on an acoustic or an electric. I can tell you that, uh, I'm sorry, acoustic or classical. The classical has nylon strings, which will tear your fingernails up less. So the classical 100% all day long is going to be more friendly for finger picking. With that being said, uh, I do finger pick on the electric and on the sail string acoustic. So I do it on both, but the chances of you you know, cutting into a nail, tearing a nail off, that sort of thing is going to be easier on the acoustic as opposed to the classical guitar, nylon string, because the strings are nylon, okay? All right, my friends, that is it for today. I love you guys. There's three things, I, or a few things I want you to remember. Remember kit.com slash your guitar sage if you have any questions about any gear, okay? Any gear that I've got, uh, my reviews. I do lots of reviews on YouTube. If you guys have questions, and especially with the Christmas season coming up super close to us, uh, if you have any questions about any of that stuff, that's where you want to go. I'm going to point you in the right direction. I don't review or post anything in that store that I don't stand behind, that I don't think is great. Okay? All right. Um, kits. Okay, number one is kit. Uh, yourguitarsage.com slash 30. If you haven't gone to this already, friends, it's a perfect opportunity because we're going bye-bye here. And start here, okay? These are, I think we have 24 of those 30, those first 30 videos uh, up there. Eventually, we're going to have all 30 of them, but we, we had a, a bit of a snafu when we did our, our site change. So start there, okay? And those videos are absolutely going to build a foundation for you so that you're not lost when you're watching my videos or Justin's videos or whoever's videos, Papa Stash, um, 
whoever's videos you're watching, that core foundation is going to help you so that you can move on. You can jump around on YouTube and get some information. Okay. Um, last thing I want to tell you about is the free guitars. Uh, yourguitarsage.com slash three free 30 free guitars giveaway. Uh, you can go there, check that out, or if you'd like to enter to win, I think we're on day 19 or day 20 or something like that today. Uh, yeah, day 20, I, I believe, is today. What is the date? It's the 21st. Maybe, maybe we're on day 21. Uh, I think we're on day 20. We're one day, yeah. Nonetheless, we're giving more guitars away, okay? And we have another like $8,000 worth of stuff to give away before the end of the year. So there you go. So you know what to do. The only thing you got to do is leave a comment on any of my videos, even this one right now. Leave comments on uh, YouTube, Facebook, or Instagram. We're looking at these comments all day long when one jumps out to us. Uh, sometimes we do them random, but usually we're looking for something, something nice and what have you, and not, not begging for a guitar. I typically jump straight over those when people are begging for guitars. It doesn't make you look good. Don't do that. Okay. Okay. Don't do that. Um, what else? That's it, my friends. I love you guys. Thank you so much. I, I love doing these live broadcasts. They're so much fun, and it's fun hanging out with you guys. you got great questions. Hopefully, I was able to answer some questions for you guys today. I'm out of here.